I'm Tracy Hanrahan. Rahan. Welcome to another edition of Courtmore News. Tonight, recycling. Is it a load of rubbish? As society has grown wealthier, it makes more and more rubbish. Each year in the European Union, we throw away 3 billion tonnes of waste. 90 million tonnes of it is hazardous. This amounts to about 6 tonnes of waste for every person. Treating and disposing of this waste without harming the environment is a growing problem. The European Union has set targets for the waste management that are based on three principles. Waste prevention, recycling and reuse, and improving final disposal and monitoring. Recycling rates for households across England have risen to 39.7%. The statistics compiled by the Department for Environmental Food and Rural Affairs show a 2.1% increase in recycling, composting and reuse of household waste. One of the biggest improving councils was in Rugby, where there has been an 18.8% increase, and in South Oxfordshire, where there has been an increase of 18.6%. So what exactly can be recycled? Let's go to our environmental correspondent, William Gethelloyd, who is at a recycling complex in Berkshire. William. Thank you, Tracy. Love the hair. I'm outside Londis at the Bottle Bank in Bracknell. As you can see, we can recycle green glass, clear glass and brown glass. But is that all? Let's see what other waste we can recycle. Newspapers and magazines, junk mail and cardboard are all recyclable. Tetra pack containers cannot be recycled, so, where possible, avoid buying products sold in these types of containers. Glass jars and bottles can be recycled, but remember to remove the lid. Pyrex, broken windows, light bulbs and glassware cannot be recycled. Most plastic bottles can be recycled, but plastic packaging such as logger pots, clean film, carrier bags and polystyrene cannot be recycled. Most tins and cans can be recycled along with empty aerosol cans, but tin foil, takeaway containers or crisp packets cannot be recycled. Back to Tracy in the studio. Thanks William, I hope that wasn't the brown bottle you were putting in the green glass container. So, recycling rates are up and an increasing number of different types of materials can now be recycled. But is it all good news? An increase in the types of materials that can be recycled has left some householders with a bewildering array of different containers that need to be used to accommodate all of the different types of recycled materials. And there is a maggot and odour problem that can occur during the summer months due to the introduction of alternative bin collection schemes in many councils. So while most people accept that recycling is important, the manner and methods by which local councils enforce recycling are not always popular, but is it worse than that? Recycling is big business, and where there's muck, there's brass. Supermarket giant Tesco has orders cancelled across Britain to remove recycling bins from its car park so it can install its own money-making collection services, potentially netting £25 million. Furious Council Chiefs have accused the retailer of being greedy after it brought in a private contractor to replace the council collection bins at 500 stores. Supermarket recycling points have generated more than £50,000 a year for councils, which is then ploughed back onto local services. But Tesco's will now sell the recycled bottles at aluminium itself, denying councils a useful source of income. Hard up councils accuse Tesco's of corporate greed. Bristol City Council has been banned from operating in three Tesco supermarkets. In our Bristol studio, we have Gary Hopkins, Recycling Chief at Bristol City Council. Thanks for joining us, Mr. Hopkins. How worried are you about the action that Tesco has taken? Well, um, naturally, we're very concerned. Uh, as a council, we stand to lose a significant sum of money. Are other supermarkets in your area taking similar actions? We seem to have uh, three different types of supermarkets. There are supermarkets like uh, Aldi and Lidl, who point blank refuse to uh, allow us to use their car parks for our recycling centres. Uh, then you have uh, supermarkets like Sainsbury's and Waitrose, who are more than happy to work with us. And then there's Tesco's, uh, Tesco's who seem determined uh, to want to make a profit out of this. How are you going to address the loss of revenue? Well, if we just take uh, aluminium cans, for example, uh, quite a sizable profit. 
uh, can be made out of recycling uh, those. So we're going to be asking people to put their aluminium cans in the black boxes for doorstep collection rather than taking, uh, the, rather than taking them to Tesco's. Uh, that way we can use the money to help reduce uh, council tax. Uh, but there's more to it than that uh, because we have uh, specific recycling rates that we have to meet. Uh, and if Tesco's are taking the uh, material f uh, and recycling it from themselves, then it's lost from our waste stream and really, we really have no idea how much waste we're recycling. Mr Hopkins, thank you very much. Gloucester City Council is also set to lose £50,000 each year after Tesco banned their recycling bins from its stores, while Carlisle City Council confirmed they will lose a staggering £80,000 each year. Tesco claims it will inject the money back into local projects of its choosing, such as school sports programmes. The chain denied it is cashing in on the recycling at the expense of local councils. While the action that Tesco has taken isn't illegal, the profits that can be made from recycling, especially electronic waste or e-waste, can be significant enough to attract criminals. Earlier today, I spoke to Jane Howard from the Environmental Agency about the problem of the illegal e-waste export. Jane, what is e-waste and how much of it is there? About a million tonnes of electronic or electrical equipment comes onto the market in the UK every year as we upgrade our computers and televisions. A substantial proportion of that becomes waste and that's what we call e-waste. What should happen to this waste? There has been a lot of investment in this country in facilities to recycle e-waste, such that the whole quantity can be recycled here in the UK. So why do we have a problem? The problem is that a portion of that waste is being diverted away from those legal recycling centres by criminal activity and exported abroad illegally. What happens to the e-waste when it gets abroad? Basically, the plastic and other materials are burnt off to recover the precious metals, such as gold, contained within the computers and televisions, causing considerable damage to the environment and to the health of individuals. How are you tackling the problem? The Environment Agency was doing an awful lot to tackle this kind of criminality. Three years ago, we set up a national intelligence team and a national crime team, and we are targeting criminals involved in the illegal export of waste. Jane, thank you very much. Well, that's all we have time for. Join us tomorrow at the same time for another edition of Courtmore News. Mm -hmm.